Hey guys, so we're going to look at transformations of functions today. So uh, this should be a review, so we're going to go a little bit quick. So if I have something like f of x plus k, we know that this moves the every point on the graph up or down. And if k is greater than 0, which means positive, then the graph moves up. And if it's less than 0, the graph is going to move down. The points on the graph are the x stays the same but the y is changed by adding k. Okay, we're going to look at the next one, dilation. Um, every point on the graph is multiplied by a scale factor of a. If a is greater than 1, the graph is stretched vertically. If it's between 0 and 1, the graph shrinks. So we call this a dilation. Um, every point on the graph is being multiplied. Every y point is being multiplied by a. Okay? The x stays the same. A vertical reflection, if you have the function multiplied by a negative, that would be the y point is becoming negative y, then the graph is being reflected across the x-axis. All right, on the back, we are looking at horizontal reflection, or horizontal transformations. Remember that anything um, that happens horizontally is we're actually going to perform the inverse operation. So if I have f of x minus h, the graph is moved left and right. If h is greater than 0, so that would be like if I have um, x minus 2, the h is actually positive 2, the graph is going to move to the right. And if I have x plus 3, my h is actually negative 3, it would be x minus minus 3, the graph is going to move to the left. So um, to get all the x points, the new x points, we're going to do x minus h, and then the y stays the same. Horizontal dilation. Um, this is probably new, but if you multiply the x by a b value, then the graph is stretched horizontally by a factor of b. But, actually, it's a factor of 1 over b. So, to get your new x values and at the same y values, you're going to do 1 over b times x. So, remember, inverse operations. If I have something um, like 2 let's see, f of 2x, my b value is greater than 1. We're moving twice as fast, so it's going to take half as long for us to complete our graph, so the graph actually shrinks. If our b value is a fraction, like f of 1 half x, think I'm taking, I'm like walking half the speed, it's going to take me twice as long, so I am going to stretch horizontally. All right, last one, and then we're going to go through the examples, is the f of negative x. So if um, this time this is also a reflection, but it's when the x's are negative. So we're changing our x's from positive to negative, so it's going to reflect over the y-axis. So we get negative x, um, and then the y's stay the same. Okay, so let's go back to the top. So the square, I graph the mother functions for you. We need to put in the domain, the range, and then the domain and range for the new function with a graph transformation. So the domain and range for uh, square root of x is from 0 to infinity and 0 to infinity. And 0 gets, that's a included point at 0, 0. What does the minus 3 do to our function? It's going to move us 3 units down. So this uh, anchor point is going to move us 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. See, I'm going to move over 1, 2, 3, 4, up 2 for a square root function. So it looks like that. So does the domain change? No, it's the same. And the range changes from negative 3 to infinity. All right, x cubed. This is all real numbers. So guess what? No matter what I do to this function, 
I'm still going to have a domain and a range of all real numbers. I am going to stretch out each point by times 3. So my y value is 0. It's going to stay 0. My y value is 1, but I'm going to multiply that by 3. So 3, 3. Negative 1 would change to a negative 3. And each point is getting vertically stretched. Next, oops, we're going to change this to the absolute value of x. So 4 times the absolute value of x. Sorry, this should be a reflection. So negative absolute value of x. Um, right now, the range is the only thing that's being restricted. So from 0 to infinity, negative infinity to infinity. So the domain shouldn't change because it's included all values. The range, let's see, if I multiply all my y values by a negative, well, they're going to reflect. So I'm going to end up with points on the bottom half of the graph. So my new range would be flipped from what I had before. So I still start at 0, but I'm going to go to negative infinity. All right, the next set is horizontal transformations. So again, we're going to start with the square root of x. We know what the domain and range are for that. Okay. And we're going to transform by x minus 3 on the inside. So remember, that means that h is positive 3, which means we're moving to the right. So I'm going to take each point and move 1, 2, 3. And then I'm going to count the shape from there. Over 1, up 1. Over 2, one, over 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. four is, the square root of 4 is 2. Boom. Okay, that's my new shape. So I can see that my range doesn't change. The y values don't change. So I'm still 0 to infinity. But my domain changed because I'm starting 3 units after Um after I normally would. Okay, x cubed to quantity 2x to the third power. So x cubed is negative infinity to infinity. Oops. And then when I multiply the inside by 2, that's my b value, you're moving twice as fast, so it's going to take you half the amount of time. So each one of these outputs, uh, if I was out um, 2, 1 is going to move over to 1 half 1. At 2, 8, I'm going to move over to 1, 8. So I'm going to look like this. Okay. this. It looks like a vertical stretch at this point, but in later graphs, <laughs> it's going to matter that we, that the, that we differentiate between vertical and horizontal stretch. So our domain doesn't change, and our range doesn't change. Okay, last one. So the, ab the square root of x and y is equal to the negative square root of x. When the, the negative is on the inside, it's going to reflect the x values. So instead of positive 1, 1, we're going to move to negative 1, 1. Instead of 4, 2, we are going to get a value of negative 4, 2. Okay, so it looks like this. Our new graph looks like this. Our domain was 0 to infinity. Range was 0 to infinity. Does the range change? Nope, still the same height. But our domain sure changes. We're going to start with negative infinity as our min and end with 0 now. And that is it for now.